Every 17 years, cicadas invade Princeton, New Jersey. Are you tired of the cicadas yet? I'm very tired of the cicadas. Yeah. They're eating up everything. Well, I'm tired of sweeping them up. Judy DeToro and her son Pepper know all too well how the raucous insects can overtake a backyard. Only 17 more years. Okay, good. This story is about another yard. Three feet, 36 measly inches, and how that distance affected the football career of Judy's father, Pepper's grandfather. Jack Hinkle. His life was football. That's all he thought about. Hinkle was a Philadelphia Eagle who became a Steagle. Not familiar with that winged creature? With many NFL players off fighting in World War II, the league struggled to find enough players to field teams in 1943. The Steelers and Eagles combined their rosters to form the Steagles. Hinkle had been in the war, but health issues brought him home. He was in the Army Air Force, but my father had had rheumatic fever, so he only was in for about a year. Yeah, ulcers. He had ulcers, but he also had a rheumatic heart. In 43, he was a big part of Philadelphia's first ever winning season. I've never seen any footage, but I've seen pictures, and he looks very upright. 6'1", back in those days, was pretty tall. I'm excited to see the footage. Pretty cool to see him yeah. actually running the ball. I know he's holding that ball like a loaf of bread. I'm not sure he's just holding that far out. And he really swings that left arm out. Ooh. <laughs> he could clothesline back then. Hinkle played both offense and defense. Here he's seen intercepting Hall of Famer Sammy Baugh. In 1943, he ran for a career high 571 yards, one yard shy of New York giant Bill Pascal's league leading total. But apparently, a funny thing happened when the Steagles played the Giants on October 9th. From what I recall, they're playing in a muddy field, and he had a big run, and there's so much mud on these players' jerseys that. When the statistician wrote down who had that run, he wrote down the wrong number. Well, the other thing, I can't blame it maybe all on him, because I remember Daddy saying that they all had one shirt with their numbers on it. And if they got muddy, they had a pile of shirts over on the sideline, and they just pulled one out and put it on to take off the wet, muddy shirt. So it may not have been his fault at all. Maybe my father just had the wrong number on Adding mystery to the mix-up is the fact that we haven't found any film from the game in question. But it seems Hinkle was not credited for a 37-yard run. So instead of losing the rushing title by a yard, he should have won it by 36. Hinkle learned of the error, but he was an eagle, not a cicada. He didn't make any noise, and consequently, no change ever was made in the record book. They said, why don't you do something about it, Jack? But he never did. And knowing my father, he would not want to cause an uproar because that would make him look horrible in some people's eyes, on his teammates, perhaps. But he would, no, he would. He was very humble at times. He's like, yeah, it's not a big deal. When, you know, the NFL rushing title is kind of a big deal. <laughs> Only two Philadelphia Eagles ever have led the league in rushing. LaShawn McCoy was the champ in 2013. The number one running back in the National Football League. Steve Van Buren, who became Hinkle's backfield mate in 1944, won the title four times. But if not for a statistical error that created the longest yard, Jack Hinkle would have been Philly's first. <laughs>